Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be talking about uh, fishbowl sales order dropship items. Now, why that's important is actually pretty cool. So, in a business situation, you may have a relationship between well, you don't ever sell this heavy piece of equipment, right? You always sell it from your vendor's warehouse directly. So, you never bring it into inventory, you never receive it, and then ship it out from your warehouse. It's always drop shipped. Or maybe you have a business uh, arrangement where uh, company A is an e-commerce company and um, its business model is to sell for company B which is the inventory company that maybe manufactures it or whatever there's some kind of relationship you need to do. In both cases instead of actually receiving the inventory into your warehouse and then selling it out maybe you don't have a warehouse and you can't use it you create what's called a drop ship right so in Fishbowl they have a, the ability to be able to indicate that on a sale that an item that is on a sales order, hence in this case dropship, is set to dropship. Now what that happens is when you create the order and issue the order within Fishbowl, it will automatically create a purchase order for the default vendor. So here's that purchase order, 10083, and it's issued. And we are using a, a function inside of Fishbowl called automatically issued dropship orders. That's a nice module option that we can use. That way we got, we've got some neat um, business process automation right here so we know that we can then say alright I need to send out uh, these next three um, vendor purchase orders so that I can start getting this product out the door so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually programmatically create these sales orders from um, our console application so this is now back to developer land so what I'm gonna do is use our uh, my company's um, library for connecting to Fishbowl, making the connection, logging in, serializing and deserializing XML, and making all that easy. And all we have to do as a developer is have the data ready to go, map it to our objects, send that down to Fishbowl, and then uh, reap the benefits. So this mix of business, mix of programming, but hopefully you'll realize that this is not as scary as, as it seems, and we can actually use Fishbowl in a very um, expressive or business uh, positive uh, environment. So let's give this a shot. So I've got my Fishbowl API. I'm logging in. I made the connection, did all that before, so I know this will work. What we're going to do is we're going to populate the sales order object with data, and then we're going to send that down to Fishbowl and then create a sales order with it. So we're going to do new sales order. We're going to curly brace and set the properties. So we're going to set the status to 20. We're going to set the issue flag to true. And then we're going to set the customer name. Now, uh, this customer name has already been pre-created in Fishbowl, and the reason why that is is that Fishbowl will not just let you create a sales order if the customer isn't there. So you have to do another call and request to create a customer. And then, and then I'm going to set items. I'm going to do items, new list sales order item. Let that auto complete. And new sales order item. Currently brace. Now we're going to set the properties for one item. Product number CR401. Product price $7. Products price price specified true. Now this should actually be a um, maybe a nullable double, but uh, that's just an effect of the XSD to classes that I'm using. The solution to that is nillable, but that's more developer talk than we probably want. And then finally, uh, what we have here at the end is the item type. So what item type would we use? Now, normally we would use just 10 and call it a day. Now, 10s are sales. And how I know that is, well, because I'm just experienced at Fishbowl, but here's how you can figure that out. If you go to the Fishbowl client and then go to the data module, you go to the table section, normally you'll see this, go to tables, SO item type and then go ahead and look at the list. So here tens are sales, twelves are drop shifts. That's all we need to do. Okay, so instead of ten, it's twelve. And that's it. Okay, now we have our class. That'll give us our XML that we need. But we need to actually do something with it. So what we're gonna do is uh, uh, send it down to Fishbowl and receive an updated sales order object. So we're gonna do var new SO API save SO, our sales order object that we intend to send down, and then a property um, 
parameter for uh, if it's tr if it's a new sales order or not. In this case, it is. So now that we have that, we're going to do a console write line. And then we're going to get the new sales order number. Okay. And then uh, I think that should be it. Looks good. Just double checking. Let's give it a run. Okay. 50072 is our next uh, sales order number. We're going to go to sales order 50072. We open that up. Okay, we see that it's an uh, order of the same CR401. Fishbowl is put in the description for us. We have a 20 of 10, unit price of 7, $70 to drop ship, uh, $70 and it's type of drop ship. If we double click on this item to edit, we can see that that's a type drop ship. All that's great, fun stuff there. If we go to sale purchase order, uh, we see that purchase order 10085 has been created and also issued. If we click into that, we can see that ooh, we're selling this stuff at a, I believe, a loss, right? Yep, <laughs> looks like we're selling at a loss. But anyway, we have now the purchase order created for the quantity of 10 with uh, that vendor's vendor number and it's already issued. Now, Fishbowl is not going to automatically email this, fax it, or uh, EDI this out uh, by default, but it wouldn't be too much of a stretch to uh, then create a, another application that would communicate this out to our destination vendor by email, PDF, fax, um, carrier pigeon whatever you guys need to do to communicate to your vendors. Sometimes they are difficult to get hold of. But anyway, that's really it. Um, maybe we'll do another video on this other cycle of communicating data from Fishbowl out to a third party, kind of sort of EDI, but not really. But you can see how uh, Fishbowl is a lot more capable than I, what I believe people uh, give it credit to. So if you have any questions, please let us know. But this is, will be uh, probably a preview of our uh, developer training course that we're putting out there, just putting out the seeds now. If you have any questions about the course or what we can do as a development process, please let us know. Thanks. Have a good day.